All right, what's up, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen? We're back, and we're going to close off the Obnix list for now. On Obnix list, the Unshackled with a little deck tech video because I haven't done one for this deck so far. So that's the Commander. I've liked playing it. It's my first ever mono black deck that I've actually ever tried playing. Um, it's not been centered around Obnix list as it could be. You could force your opponents to tutor cards with Meryl in the Morning Song, but I never liked that idea. Uh, so let's go on to the deck. Let's start with the basic lands. There are swamps, obviously. And then we have our non-basics. A lot of the typical uh, typical suspects. We have Ancient Tomb, which is pretty much in every deck I've ever played. Mitchell's Workshop is pretty good in this deck. We have a lot of artifacts. I can't really show you right now, but it's been pretty powerful. And then also you have an Herborg at the bottom, which later on can turn this Ancient Tomb or Mitchell's Workshop, actually both of them, into a Swamp, which can be very helpful, as you'll see later on. We have a Baron Moor, which I like. It's a Cycling Land. You have a Crucible of Worlds, so you can value off Cycling this card. You know, cycling this and then putting it back into play. Uh, also, you do have a lot of lands. You have 39 in the, <coughs> the deck. Sometimes you get a little flooded, so putting this away can be helpful. But Jukabog, which is an all-star, uh, you see a lot of artifact, or not artifact, graveyard abuse uh, lately, especially because there's some... Derevi the Scrapyard guy likes to abuse the graveyard with scrapyard things, and you want to get rid of them. And Jukabog, just a very good card. Also, we have ways to tutor it with our expedition map, which is right across the, the lane here. So we have a lot of use for all these non-basics expedition map. I like a lot in this deck. I don't play expedition map in every deck, but in this deck I do like it because there are a lot of lands that do a lot of different things. Cabal Coffers, obviously, most mono black decks want this card. Adds black to your mana pool for each one you control. It only costs two, so if you have... Four mana, basically, four swamps in play becomes an ancient tomb. With uh, Herborg, gets a combo. You basically turn all of your lands into swamps, and everything gets kind of crazy. Cavern of Souls, just a way to push through whatever card you want to push through. Sometimes it's bad to have this, but a lot of times you just want to push through your demons. There's a demon sub-theme in this deck. I did have to cut some of the demons because some of them aren't very good. But I like Cavern. High Market. I have high market in here because we have the Arborg to, to put, turn into a uh, swamp. And I just don't want people stealing my commander or my other big kind of creatures if I can avoid it. So I have high market in there. Phyrexian Tower, another way to sacrifice your guys away and get actually some value with the mana. Nykthos, another way to make mana faster. You've got some heavy black cards in the deck, as you'll see. So this lets you choose a color, like black, add that mana pool. Add bla the black mana to your mana pool equal to the amount of devotion. Reliquary Tower, sometimes you draw a lot of cards and Reliquary helps. Thong Laser is another way of just some card advantage, getting more swamps and being okay. It's not the best card. Strip Mine and Dust Bowl is our, our, our land hate. <coughs> and we have Crucible, so obviously they can both go off pretty quickly. And I like Dust Bowl with cards like uh, Bajuka Bog and Crucible because if you have a Bajuka Bog, you can just keep a Juga bogging them. Sometimes you want to get you want to rebuy it and then Dust Bolt gives you a way of doing that. We have our Fetch Lands Bloodstained Mire. Marsh Flats, Pluto Delta. Oh, Pluto Mire, there's another cycling land. That I missed. And Verdant Catacombs. I think that's all of them, right? One, two, three, four. I think I'm maybe missing one. Anyway, they're there. Black, white, no, they're all there. We have the, yeah, they're all there. Anyway, next columns are Ramp, Mana Crypt, Everflowing Chalice. Um, we do have the, what do you call it? Mizzou's Workshop, which is pretty nice with the Everflowing Chalice. Soul Ring, obviously. Expedition Map, which we talked about. Mind Stones, an All Star. Felwar Stone, sometimes your opponents are playing black, which lets you get more. But we have a very mana intensive deck, so Felwar Stone makes the cut here. Worn Power Stone, Coalition Relic. Crucible Worlds, I love this card. It's not a ramp card, but it's a mana card, so it's in this column. The thing with Crucible is it's got so many uses that even though it, it automatically brings out a lot of negative connotations with, you know, Strip Mine, but it's such a good card, I just can't, I can't help to play this card almost any time I can. 
Thran Dynamo. You want more mana. Solemn gives you a mana, a land, a blocker, a dude. Crypt Gas. Crypt Gas. So this card is a 3 and a black, 2-2. Two, two. With an extort, whenever you cast a spell, if you pay black, you can make each opponent lose one life and gain one life. So better in 4-player, but also good in 1v1, because some, you do pay a lot of life in this deck. This deck does tend to sacrifice life for resources. Crypt Gas can help you get those back, but also he doubles your swamps. He's another Gauntlet effect. Gilded Lotus, and then Gauntlet of Power. Obviously, Gauntlet of Power has a drown side, which you make your opponent's swamps. Uh, if they're basic lands, tap for double. So you have to be careful. If you put this with Urborn on the battlefield, your opponent has basic lands, you're going to double your opponent's mana. <laughs> so be very careful about that. You're going to give them extra colorless mana, and that can come up from time to time. The card's not perfect, but it, most of the time it's pretty good. A lot of like blue decks, blue white, blue red, so this is pretty nice. Cage Sun, the one sided effect, also doubles you know doubles your mana and gives you plus one plus one. And it doesn't have to be a basic land, so Urborgs and stuff get out of control with this. And then they're Connor Revenant, so it's a four fork vampire shade for six mana and whenever you tap a swamp, you get another swamp. And you can also just pump her up and start killing people. Pretty nice card. Alright, so here's our card draw slash tutor section. Vampiric Tutor. Top is a card selection. Demonic Tutor. I don't have all the tutors. I have Pain Seer. Now, Pain Seer has been pretty nice in this deck. People don't play a lot of low drops all the time. They tend to like, just play a lot of expensive spells. And I've drawn like five or six cards with Pain Seer. Obviously, you can do a lot of damage to yourself, but you know this also threatens your opponent's early Planeswalkers. So I've been impressed with him, and then eventually he'll, you know... He won't be able to do much, but at that point, he's usually done his job. And also, people will spend removal on Pain Seer. It's better for them to spend removal on Pain Seer than your six, you know, five, six, seven drops. So that's a nice thing about him. Dark Confidant, another way to pay life to draw cards. He's like the better version of Pain Seer for the most part, and the greatness at any cost. Very awesome flavor decks. Fireworks and Arena, another way to draw cards and pay life. Erebos, five, seven, legendary enchantment creature god. And he basically draws you cards and pays life. So that's pretty much been the last four cards in a row. Now make it five. Blood Gift Demon. Pay life. Draw a card. It's pretty good. Drop Keep is a 5 4 flyer. Pretty awesome card. Pretty much, yeah, I have to kill Blood Gift Demon or you're going to get a lot of value. And he's got the Pimp Cup with Blood. You know, raise your glass up in the air. I like this card a lot. He does tend to get Wrathed a lot, I've noticed. I notice every time I've played Blood of the Demon, he tends to get Wrathed next turn, so just don't overcommit. You don't want to just overcommit all your good, you know, value creatures and just let him get Wrathed away. It's kind of good sometimes to save him for after Wrath. Mind's Eye, awesome, all-star. You know, you don't have a way to deal with enchantments and things, but Mind's Eye lets you kind of grind your opponent out in other ways. And if you land in a line, Mind's Eye, they don't remove it. If you keep it around for, you know, four turns, you're pretty much... Guarantee, not guarantee, but you're in really good shape to win the game. And then Rune Scar Demon, a 6 6 flyer, which lets you Demonic Tutor. So basically, you have a 4, four 6 6 flyer for 5 mana, which is a pretty good deal. Then you add on a Demonic Tutor to it, and a very powerful card, of course. So here's our removal suite, Tragic Slip. So it seems like a weak removal spell, and sometimes it is, but people do play a lot of elves. A lot of one toughest creatures. Uh, this really helps with like Edric decks, Elf decks, stopping them from getting an insane start. And then at the same time, you can just trigger Morbid and give, pretty much kill anything for one mana. And I've not seen this card played a lot, but I've been, been impressed with it. Very rarely has this card been a dead card. And I'm surprised it's not played more. I think people kind of overlook it because it seems like it's hard to happen, but it actually is not that hard. I mean, this figure, just a way to kill early drops, elves, you know, key cheekies. There's a lot of good two drops in the format, like the uh, Fauna Shaman. You just want to get those off the board for a little bit of mana. Grasp of Darkness, minus four, minus four. Not a very conventional card. I play a lot of 1v1. This is more of a 1v1 deck, but I've actually blown people out before player, which is nice. Go for the Throat, obviously, can becomes dead against artifact decks. I've it's funny because I played a couple of card decks. I feel like every time I played a card deck, I've drawn this card in my opener, which is very strange. Diabolic Edict, Instant Speed, make them sacrifice a creature. 
pretty much a must have against card you know Earl the Miststock or Geist of St. Traft or people who have pro black like Animar like Animar is a problem because he can just bash through all of your guys for the most part and he comes down early and then he gets out of control and you need cards like this to deal to Animar same with Devour Flesh although it gives him life the life usually does not matter you just want to get rid of things so Devour Flesh makes the cut Chainers Edict not an instant but gets you flashbacks so you get some value out of it you pretty much usually want to spew these off early because there are a lot of tokens of weaker creatures. Because it pretty much says kill your opponent's weakest creature. Rail Assassin. I've liked Rail Assassin. He's been pretty nice. He pretty much stops your opponents from attacking. And sometimes you can just kill people with it because they have to attack either into you or your planeswalkers. Um, maybe he's not the best, but he can also blow people up because there is Lightning Greaves in the deck. Murder. Just destroying any creature. Here's Downfall is the better murder because it gets Planeswalkers. Also an instant, which is very nice. Drana. Drana is so good. I think Dr this deck would probably be better if it just had Drana as the commander. But the thing that's nice about Drana is if they don't know it's coming, they won't play around it. And you can just dump Drana out there and start, you know, killing guys. If you have Drana as your commander, people are going to like, oh, there's Drana. I'm not going to play my small creatures until I can find a way to deal with Drana. So it's one of the things about nice about having her in your deck and not as your commander. Duplicate, exiles a creature, and steal Hellkite. One way to deal with those enchantments and artifacts you might have otherwise a hard time of dealing with, as long as as well as Shroud and Hexproof creatures. Still a very nice one. Also, we do have the Miser's Workshop Ancient Tomb. And we can usually make mana pretty quickly. I'm usually not activating the plus one plus zero very often. There he is. Here's our Wraths, just Black Sun Zenith, Damnation, and Decree of Pain. I used to have the 6 mana one that puts 3 creatures into your opponent's graveyard. I kind of cut it. I I feel like I was always drawing like a Wrath when I just had a bunch of you know value spells and creatures to play. And sometimes you do want a Wrath, but you do have a couple tutors, so I don't think like 4 Wraths is, is, is too many. Well, I think it is too many. I think 3 is kind of where I like it. I like Decree of Pain. A lot of Elf Goblin decks and the Kriya Pain cycling can really blow people out. And I've blown people out in 4-player commander with this. There was definitely an Elf deck on the table at that point. And you do get to draw a ton of cards with that, if you can. So we have Duress. This is our, this is our discard suite. So we have Duress. Obviously worse than Thoughtseize. Don't have a Thoughtseize. I just really hate the new art. The old art's pretty expensive. <laughs> Probably should get a Thoughtseize at some point. Maybe I will. Him to Turok. Well, it's kind of such a blowout sometimes. You just get people. It's such a horrible card to play against, but it feels so great to play with it because just you know you're getting value because you're always getting two cards. Most they only have one card. Then we have Hypnotic Specter, which I love this guy. He's an early play, which a lot of EDH decks lack. They lack early plays. They also lack early flyers. And you just start getting your opponents with Hypnotic Specter and they're just slowly discarding at random. And yeah, it's pretty bad. He is awesome, sweet original art. And Mind Twist, just... Uh, I People can see the Mind Twist. I mean, for good reason. But this is a blowout card. Even if they have four cards in hand, I will do this for three. You're going to pretty much get whatever they wanted and leave them maybe with a good card. But even then, you're getting three for one and it's random. So they have no choice of the matter. All right, so this is our kind of... Uh, Random pile. We've got Nihil Spellbomb, another Graveyard Hate. I feel like, you know, you don't want letting people reanimate their things because you're definitely killing a lot of creatures. Uh, good against some of the Graveyard decks that are rolling around recently. Reanimate. Reanimate your guys, reanimate your own guys, their guys, whoever's guys. Just take them. And then Lightning Greaves, great card. Animate Dead, another reanimate spell. And then Mimic Vat. Mimic Vat's just awesome. You have so many removal, wrath spells. This card is very good. Also, you can play turn one on it with Miser's Workshop if you'd like. So here's kind of our beef of the deck. Just the creatures that do things that just kill kill you. Phyrexian Obliterator. Oh, man. This card is great. I think I was playing a Sliver deck, and he had a Provoke Sliver or something. He, he really screwed up, but he forced... He forced Firex, you know, Obliterator to block his sliver. <laughs> oh, that was pretty awesome. But yeah, he was not too happy about that. <clears throat> um, Firex Obliterator is pretty great. I mean, it's not the best card, but it's 5-5 five, five and Trample. And really, your opponents don't want you to just block it. 
And he does a sweet card. I think that's the reason I got him, just because I think he's a sweet card. Not because I think he's the best card, but he also helps with your devotion, and that should be pretty good for you. The other Omnix list, the Fallen. So he's a 3 black black, 3-3, three, three, not the best stats, but then he landfall. Whenever I land on his battlefield, you get to have target player lose through life, and you get to put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters. It becomes a 6-6 six, six, pretty much, usually right away. And you have to drain, drain your opponent for 3. And we do have some fetch lands. You have Crucible. This works well with Crucible, Worlds, uh, you know, things like that. So he's pretty good. And you know, just like the Demon, he's a good guy, and he kills your opponent pretty fast, because he gets big pretty fast. Batter Skull. Nice thing to put on Nop's next list, because you want to do some commander damage. It makes him an 8 8. Or if your opponents are having creatures die, kill them in two or three turns. And you, you need to gain life back. This is one of the only ways to gain life. I think that's actually the only way, because. There's no Warm Coil Engine in this deck. I don't have any like the Drain Life, so we all we have the Extort guy. But Battle Skull is a nice one, and it's a recurring you know threat. If they kill the token, you can just bring it back. Great Titan, just a fatty, some value. Zombies falling off him. Just couldn't see not playing him. Lord of the Void. <laughs> I have a secret love for this card. I don't know why, but. He's so expensive and he does nothing when he hits the table, but you get to attack with him, usually you feel pretty good about it. I feel like he should have Trample. Maybe he would be too good at Trample, I don't know. Probably not, but... You have to exile seven cards of your opponent's library and just pick a creature. Awesome guy, and he's a demon, so why not? I mean, if he was a legendary creature, I might even play him. Probably, he'd probably be really terrible as a commander, but whatever. <clears throat> then we have our Planeswalkers, Leon of the Veil. Vale. You know, eating your opponent's hands, oftentimes you can draw cards with your draw spells, offset the, you know, the each player discards a card, you also get to reanimate things, you can discard creatures and can reanimate, make them sacrifice a creature, a lot of hexproof stuff rolling around, and then the minus six sometimes comes into play, not too often. Another Liliana, helps you get swamps, another rule spell, not the best card, but you know, getting swamps is not terrible. And I've had the emblem go off, and you just you can pretty much recast your your general into oblivion when you get that that ultimate off because you just never run out of mana. And then the other Liliana vest, so making opponents discard, you can vamp tutor, and you can reanimate all the creatures. So <laughs> I've never gotten the ultimate off, and I'm just generally just making my opponents discard. I'm not usually vamp tutoring unless I need a specific card. All right, and then Karn, Karn the Karn Daddy, just. You need to deal with, you know, enchantments and artifacts. He's another way to deal with them. And he's just so powerful. I love Karn. Everyone does. So that's the deck. We have Opnixilis. Obviously, we didn't even talk about him. So he's a 4 4 Flying Trample. Whenever an opponent searches his library, they sacrifice a creature and lose 10 life. And whenever another creature dies, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on him. So another thing that you want to think about when you're building decks like this is you want your 6 drop slot to be powerful because. If, you're, if your general costs 6, you want your 6 drops to be at least as good or better than your general. Um, so that's the deck. I kind of just settled it out by themes. We'll look at the converted mana cost sort. Let's see what's in our 6. We have Still Hellkite, Duplicate, Cage Sun, Revenant, and Titan. So they're all pretty good. Obnixus is just sweet. It just catches people off card. They don't really see this card all that often. They will often, you know, sacrifice a... Uh, thawing gla not thawing glaciers, evolving wilds. Not realize they have to search or elvish harbinger. You know things like they don't even realize there's a search effect, and they'll they'll just have to sacrifice a creature, and they lose ten life, and then they're just blown out. Ten life is a lot. They usually can see when they don't realize it. Um, sometimes this does nothing, but I like this guy. He's pretty sweet. One thing I'll say is someone might suggest that we play. What's it called? Ghost Quarter. And I got a Ghost Quarter. Ghost Quarter's bugged. I don't know if they fixed it yet, but if you Ghost Quarter somebody, you basically force them to search... Well, they, they may search their library for a basic land put into play. And it, this does not trigger his ability. It's bugged. If you Ghost Quarter an opponent's land and they search for a land, they should trigger this ability, but it does not work. So that's one of the dinosaurs of Magic Online right now. Uh, if you don't know what Ghost Quarter does, I guess I can bring it up. Let's see. Ghost Quarter. Let's bring it up. Oh, where'd it go? Where did it go? Well, there it is, Ghost Quarter. 
So destroy a land, if a search, this controller may search his or her library for a basic land, put it into the battlefield, and shuffle his or her library. And it, it's bugged. It should trigger his ability, but it doesn't at the moment. Hopefully they fix it. I sent their bug report in, but I just don't think it's at the top of their list. It's fixing, you know, interactions with the next list. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll be bringing you some gameplays very shortly, but I wanted to wrap this up with Optics List, the deck tech. Thanks for watching. See you next time.